Hi, my name is Bill, and you are on the finest travel beat with Angela and Bill, your source for all things travel. On today's episode, we're going to take you on a short weekend cruise we did on the Norwegian Sky cruise ship out of Miami. We'll show you all around the ship, tell you what we liked, what we thought could have been improved, and as always, at the end, we'll give you our thoughts, whether we think this is a good fit for you and your family. So stick around, enjoy the video, and we hope you learned something from it. Hello again, and thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy this video. It was a weekend cruise we did that stopped in Great Stirrup K, where we stayed at a Silver Cove Villa, and also in Nassau, Bahamas, where we did a visit to the Sandals. There'll be separate videos up on those excursions, as well as room tours, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those, and check out the other videos. Now, Angela and I actually stayed in Miami the night before the cruise, and we had a very early check-in time, a 9 a.m. check-in time between 9 and 9.30, which we were able to schedule. We thought that was definitely unusual, because when we, re when we arrived, there were actually people still getting off the ship. We ended up sitting around. The check-in process was extremely smooth. It was no problems whatsoever. But we did end up sitting around for about an hour. We did a quick live stream on some testing that we had done. You might want to check that out as well. But we ended up getting on the ship around 11.15, I guess it was. So we waited around a little bit, but it was fine. The Wi-Fi was fine. Uh, we did go to the new Norwegian terminal. We hadn't been there yet. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, very smooth process and uh, plenty of room uh, the the staff was great very comfortable very open very airy a really really nice place to wait and as always Angela will wait and do her little hop step onto the new ship uh, of course nowadays with cruise ships the first thing you want you to do is do the uh, the check into your muster station uh, if to get the washy washy stuff uh, as you can see they were, they were uh, telling us to kind of go down there now um, I'm kind of disappointed in that. I used to really like when you walked in onto a cruise ship for the first time that you went into a grand atrium or someplace where you got the wow factor. And honestly, on a lot of these ships now, you kind of lose that because you're going right to a muster station. But it does beat having everybody, uh, you know, kind of cramped together in the middle of a party before embarkation. Uh, to stand on a deck someplace for a half an hour uncomfortably. So you take the go with the bed. Uh, here we are on deck six, where we embarked. Uh, we're going through the photo lab area. Uh, the photo area was was pretty good. They had a lot of stuff on sale. Uh, they had photo packages available. We normally don't do the photo packages because we kind of film everything ourselves. But uh, we are doing a family trip towards the end of the year with uh, for my mother-in-law's 80th birthday. So we're going to have everybody together, and we'll probably do the photo package and all the fancy stuff then. Uh, here we are in the Sugar Cane Mojito Lounge, which we really, really enjoyed. Uh, as you can see, my orange Yeti that I, goes with me everywhere, that's definitely something you want to bring with you when you go on a cruise or an all-inclusive. It's some sort of an insulated mug to keep your drinks nice and cold. And there's Angela deciding which mojito she wants. They had an incredible mojito menu. Uh, all different types of drinks. They actually had mojitos on tap. I didn't try one of those, but I guess it's kind of like a little cheetahs mix that they had. It was really, really neat. Uh, great t selections of rum here as well. But they had Brugal, which is one of my favorites. They also use this lounge pretty regularly for uh, for trivia, for smaller trivias and things like that. One of the things they had on there was a Game of Thrones trivia, which uh, se people seem to enjoy. And also they had a uh, movie posted trivia. And they also hosted some scavenger hunts from here. The bartenders were great, real fun crowd, uh, a smaller intimate bar, which we really liked. Continuing along on deck six is the Bliss Lounge. Uh, the Bliss Lounge was kind of the center point of the ship. Uh, you pretty much had to walk through there for a, a lot of the things to get from forward and aft. Uh, here we have the shopping show going on. We did not stick around for the shopping show. We are just kind of filming on embarkation day. But they also have things like bingo going on here, deal or no deal. Uh, some of the largest shows and things that weren't in the main theater were here. 
Um, we were slightly annoyed at Deal or No Deal because the last day they ended up canceling it because they didn't have enough players. So we wasted a little bit of time, but probably saved money anyway. So it, it kind of worked out. My wife and I have a love-hate relationship with the bingo and with Deal or No Deal. Uh, it's expensive, but it's kind of fun. Let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on bingo and uh, Deal or No Deal and, and gambling in general on the cruise ships, which we tend not to do too much of. Angela does love her bingo, though. Now, in general, you'll see uh, there's, there's not a lot of video. It's a smaller ship. It's an older ship. Uh, it is refurbished. Uh, things are, are nice. It's it's fairly up to date. Uh, the it, But again, it's got that small classic cruise experience. The small ship experience it re was reminiscent of the Celebrity Millennium we were on. Uh, the Celebrity Millennium we really, really enjoyed. Uh, this we also did enjoy. We enjoyed that intimate feeling. But if you're looking for water slides and bumper cars and all that, while there's plenty to do, this is definitely not that type of ship. Back here we are on deck 11 in the, the Spinnaker Lounge. Now, this is really ni nice also. It had a very uh, a, a Spanish, uh, Cuban uh, motif, I would say, to it, or decor. The, when, we, the, uh, when we were sailing to Cuba, and that stopped a couple of years ago, this was one of the ships that went to Cuba. So it was, uh, it, it definitely is uh, maintaining some of that, uh, the Cuban feel, the Havana feel to it. This place never really got very crowded, and it was, uh, it was a shame because it was a really great spot, and it opened up to a spot on the front of the ship where we actually watched Sail Away from. Uh, we were able to sit down and have a couple of drinks. It was really nice, and then we walked right outside and watched as we sailed out of Miami. Now, if you've been watching the video so far and you're enjoying this, we invite you to subscribe to the channel. We uh, It really helps us out, and it helps you out because you won't miss any future updates. We are planning on doing a ton more content. Uh, on this particular cruise, we have videos up on a room tour. We also have one already up on a on the Silver Cove Villas, which were amazing on Great Stirrup K. We'll have one up on Sandals, but also we've been on uh, 10 cruises since the restart. We have videos up on some. I'm still working on a backlog on the rest. But also we're going to be doing a lot of uh, uh, videos on tips and tricks. We have a video up on uh, testing. And we're going to be updating it regularly. So definitely hit that subscribe button if you like this type of content. And give it a like. And mostly if you've watched any of my Sailway videos. The one thing you'll always see is the video of the harbor launch. So God bless the men and women of law enforcement who keep us safe, whether we're in the United States or heading out into international waters. Walking out of the Spinnaker Lounge, we're going to walk past some place that I should visit regularly, but rarely do. And no, we're not talking about church. Uh, it's the aerobics area and the gym. Uh, Angela and I get our workouts from kind of Hiking and walking, we're not really so much gym people, but uh, we will, we've will. we gotten some requests to see what the gyms look like on these the cruise ships, so we're just going to take you in here for a little bit and give you a little bit of a, uh, a view of it. They do get busy in the mornings. A lot of people do uh, you know, somehow drink till 3 or 4 in the morning, and then they're up at 6 or 7 on the exercise machine sweating it out, uh, which, which is awesome and good for them. On the uh, the port side, uh, right across, is the Mandarin Spa. We'll just show you a little bit of uh, of the interior here. Uh, we there were, were people getting treatments and things like that already, even though we got on the ship fairly early. So obviously we couldn't uh, couldn't go into the individual rooms. We we'll just give you a little taste of what it was like in the Mandarin Spa. Uh, if you're a spa person, let us know in the comments below uh, what your favorite treatments are. Uh, here is something very interesting I could definitely use, which is Apparently some sort of a baseball hat that helps you from losing your hair. Uh, probably about 30 years too late for me, or actually 40 years too late for me, but I digress. Now, Angela and I did something a little bit different on this cruise than we normally do. When we 
got on the ship instead of kind of, you know, doing our full walkthrough of the ship and getting on video and things like that, uh, we took bathing suits in our carry-on bag and we got changed into bathing suits in one of the bathrooms and went into the pool while it was uncrowded. Normally, it's not something we do. We live in Florida. We can swim pretty much year-round. But we decided just to kind of change it up a little bit um, to, to see how that experience was. Now, to let you know, there's, there's two pools. Oh, the entertainment by the pool was great. They had a reggae band when we first got on. We really enjoyed that. Uh, they had stuff going on all the time. Now, there's two pools. The pool over here starts out about four and a half feet deep and then goes to seven feet deep. The other pool is a solid seven and a half feet deep at all times. Uh, I don't know why they put these deep pools on cruise ships because me personally, I like my feet touching the ground, but uh, but they were nice. They were nice and warm, comfortable. There was a lifeguard on duty. And the unfortunate part, and this I thought was really, really strange and, and again, a little annoying, was they did not allow any drinks in the pool itself. Uh, the, you, the closer you get it, you get to have a drink on that brown ledge area around it. But as soon as somebody tried to get into a pool with... Uh, now, I understand absolutely no glass. And that's 100% uh, understandable. But if, you know, I went and tried to get in or somebody was trying to get in with their insulated mug and they got yelled at immediately. Now, we've been on a lot of cruises and a lot of all-inclusives. And honestly, I, I've never seen that. Uh, most places actually have swim-up bars. Even Disney Cruise Lines has a swim-up bar. So that was a little annoying, but it actually probably kept the crowds down in the pool too. So... Uh, an added benefit there. Now here we're up on deck 12 forward, which is uh, up here. It looks like it should be a hot tub. It's actually the Splash's children's pool. So that little area there is the children's children's only area. I did not find an adults only area, which we found was a little unusual. Um, kind of an odd spot too for the children's pool. But, uh, but that was a, a small little splash pool, which, which was nice for the kids. As we walk you around a little bit, let's just talk about the service on the ship. The service in general on cruise ships is amazing. Uh, Norwegian was no different. If you're a avid cruiser and a seasoned cruiser, just be kind of prepared that uh, the pandemic is still kind of having some effects in that a lot of the staff that had been on cruise ships for many many years did, did not return so they are getting a lot of newer staff members from from uh, various countries all over this this uh, ship had uh, i would say largely indian and filipino staff uh they were good but sometimes the english might be a little bit more of a challenge and uh you know they, they're definitely a little newer so that will get better over time but in general it was you know cruise ship experience everybody's very friendly everybody's very helpful so we didn't miss anything there. And again, a, a view of the pool. They do have a basketball court and a volleyball court, which was getting a lot of use throughout the entire cruise. Continuing on deck 12 towards the back, uh, inside the glass area here is Cagney Steakhouse, and on the other side is the Pinnacle Lounge and Sushi Bar. Those are two of the specialty restaurants that you can use if you have uh, dining included or you can pay extra for those as well. A little, uh, little patio area. What was really nice is this look opened up down onto the deck below and the great outdoor cafe. I'll speak a little bit more about the food and the food options and quality a little bit later on. But as we're looking down here, this is the great outdoor cafe, which, which is a buffet area. In the, in the back of the ship there. All right, you know what? Let's get this out of the way. Uh, food on the ship. Now, Angel and I always go on to these crews with a very critical eye because we are also travel advisors and a lot of people look to us for advice on what's a good cruise ship and what's not a good cruise ship to go on. Now, food can vary greatly. We've been on Norwegian cruises before and the food's been fantastic. Quite frankly, the food on this ship was uh, a little below our standards. Uh, right back here is the Great Outdoor Cafe. Great idea, great concept. The, uh, the presentation was okay. The quality of the food in general wasn't bad. Uh, 
the roles weren't like he had the roles weren't quite as fresh as we would have liked. Um, the you are serving yourself now, which is one thing that in the pandemic they were serving you, which we preferred. But again, I mean, there's plenty of food there, but we just we felt that the quality wasn't quite as good as we've had on other Norwegian cruise lines and on other cruises we've had in general. The flavor was okay. Um, we had some issues with, uh, we had prime rib one night, the temperature was a little bit off, I guess medium rare, it was, it was very much rare. Um, plenty of food choices though. And now there's two separate buffets, so there's the great outdoor cafe, and then inside's the garden cafe. So make sure you check them both of those out, they're kind of connected, but they have different stuff. Uh, Angela's favorite thing in the world is ice cream, so, you know, ice cream that didn't disappoint. If you've been on a cruise recently, whether it be Norwegian or any of the cruise line, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. We're always looking for feedback from people. And obviously now taste is different. Everybody has different tastes. So there were people on the cruise that we were with that absolutely loved the food. They thought it was fantastic. Again, Angela and I, we're not foodies, but we kind of know what we like. And we thought the selection could have been a little bit better and definitely the presentation it could have been a little bit better. Uh, here we are, we did our specialty dining in Cagney Steakhouse. Uh, I got the prime rib, and then uh, Angela, we got uh, onion rings with it. Uh, Angela got the, the filet. Uh, the food was good. It was, cruise ship steakhouses are not Peter Luger's. We're not expecting that at all. But the food in the steakhouse was pretty good. Other than that, we, we ate in the... Uh, uh, desserts were excellent, by the way. That's the one thing that they did, especially at the steakhouse. The desserts were very good. Uh, we ate in the main dining room one night. Uh, I had the medallions of beef that night, which were, uh, quite frankly, a little overdone. I had liked it medium rare, and it was definitely closer to, to well, uh, which is a little disappointing. And the last night, we just decided to eat at the uh, the, the sports bar, the, the local bar and grill. Had some burgers and wings, and the burgers were really, really good there. Uh, that's complimentary, the burgers and the wings, at, uh, and here we are at that sports bar, the local bar and grill. Had a lot of TVs there showing different games. A lot of people uh, hung out and just kind of had drinks there. It's in the back. It's kind of actually hard to find. It's, it's kind of hidden behind the Great Outdoor Cafe. But we really enjoyed that. And, uh, and Angela and I, if you give us a good burger, we're, ha we're happy. We're happy with that. Walk you through the adult arcade as... Uh, some fellow YouTubers call it. Uh, it was uh, pretty good. Angela did did, uh, did fairly well on it. I did very well. I played some roulette and uh, it was on a good little run. I, I don't play a lot at the casino. If I'm there a half an hour, I, I try to go and get a souvenir chip out of uh, there that I have a little display that I put up. And uh, but I, I sat there. I, I started with forty bucks and I, I walked away with one hundred and twenty. So. Uh, when I'm up a little bit, I cash out and I run and uh, I have other things. I'm not a, a huge gambler, so there's other things I'd rather do. They do have these uh, these bar games, the table bar games, which are uh, the joke of poker and things like that. I love those in Vegas because you can kind of go and I'll do a video on Vegas at one point and tell my strategy on how you can kind of kind of drink for almost free there and uh, you know n not costing a lot of money and just kind of passing the time, which is which is a lot of fun. Uh, there's no smoking in the casino when it's closed, but you can smoke there when it's open. The duty free shops are pretty good. The pricing wasn't bad. They had a good selection of stuff. I got my ship model, and here you have Angela at the only Starbucks in the world that you will see that is completely. Oh, empty with no lines. Now, Starbucks is not included. It's uh, an additional charge regardless of the drink package you have. Now, let's talk about entertainment. Here we are with the cruise director, Ferdy, who was absolutely phenomenal. He was all around the ship. He was everywhere. There was something going on. He was seen. He performed during the shows. The shows in the main theater were very nice. We enjoyed those. He was up dancing to the deck parties. He was just kind of everywhere you wanted to be. And that's one of the things we actually enjoy about small ships is uh, a cruise director, in our opinion, can make or break a cruise. He sets the tone. Uh, there's just so much that a good cruise director can do. And the ones that aren't so good, it, it, definitely, uh, it definitely takes its toll, in our opinion. 
Well, Angela and I try to keep these videos to be somewhat uh, reasonable in length so that you don't have to sit there and it wastes a lot of your time. We try to uh, you know, break it down as quickly as possible. Before we give our final thoughts, uh, we'd invite you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, that way you don't miss out on any future content. Hit that notification bell. We're going to be adding stuff on a regular basis. Probably won't be daily, but pretty close to daily. Uh, and if we get the feedback that people are enjoying the content, we'll, we'll add more. Uh, if you're enjoying it, also hit that like button. It doesn't cost you anything and really helps us out. We're going to have uh, future view videos in this series. Like I said, we already did one on the Silver Cove Villas, which were absolutely phenomenal. And then we will be doing one on our trip to Sandals Royal Bahamian soon. Uh, here you are. We're sailing into Great Stirrup Cay. Uh, there will be a future video on that as well. So in closing... Uh, it was a it was a great deal. It was a great weekend. We really enjoy cruising. Anytime we can get on the ship, Angela gets an extra day off, we do. The entertainment was fantastic. We liked the ship. The ship was small. If you do not like small ships, it's probably not for you. If you don't like the mega ships, this is definitely for you. The food, like I said, we really were, were, were quite frankly a little disappointed in. Uh, it could have been better. We thought the presentation was average particularly at the buffet the quality wasn't great um but again you know everything is ramping up uh we you know we'll, we give the norwegian sky another chance absolutely at the right price and the right opportunity um but it's definitely some place where it could be improved and we uh we indicate that in our survey which is important your surveys are so important uh they really do take those to heart they read them so if you have something where you think they fell short, don't feel be afraid to put it in the survey. You're not hurting anybody's feelings. Um, it's a significant investment in travel, so uh, they'll take this feedback. And, and again, we'll be on uh, next year. We're doing the Norwegian Viva to Europe. We're really looking forward to that. So uh, so it should be fun. Who is this ship for? Uh, it's probably not for kids that are looking for a million things to do. There's, there are uh, kids clubs and things like that. But again, there's no bumper cars. There's no roller coasters. It's a smaller ship. It's a little bit older before all those things were kind of added in. Uh, great great for weekend getaways. Uh, you know, the booze cruise, as some people call them. A lot of fun. A lot of older couples. There were a lot of families. The Like I said, the entertainment was fantastic. Uh, that, that absolutely made the cruise... And again, that varies from ship to ship, and as cruise directors move on, that matters as well. Uh, in fact, sometimes there's people that actually follow cruise directors through cruise lines. So again, uh, you know, a, a little bit different of a cruise. Uh, we were on the uh, last weekend, the Independence of the Seas before that. That video should be coming out soon as well. And again, uh, on behalf of myself and Angela, I'm really not sure whether I'm supposed to say on behalf of myself or not, uh, but... Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. We love the positive feedback. Please keep it coming. Write that down your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, we will see you on our next adventure. Bye-bye, everybody.